Well, what an honor it is to get to sit here next to the legendary Coach Vince Dooley to celebrate 50 years since your hiring as head football coach at the University of Georgia, a, a long association with this university. And is it hard to believe when you throw out a number like 50, 50 years since being hired as head coach, does it, does it feel like a long time ago or does it feel like a short 50 years? Uh, well, uh, in many ways, uh, very short, in some ways long. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how time flies. I remember that uh, Barbara and I were married one year and we went to her parents' 25th wedding anniversary. And I remember whispering to Barbara, can you imagine being married 25 years? We are now celebrating our 54th, going on 55 soon. So it's hard to believe that it's been 50 years when I came to Georgia. Uh, I might add to the shock of a lot of people. Well, we're going to take a trip through memory lane today and, and visit some of your old haunts. Some of them have probably changed a fair bit since 1964. As you look at the landscape of college athletics as a whole, and particularly here at the University of Georgia, what's the biggest difference between 2014 and, and 50 years ago in 1964? Well, just here in Georgia or in Athens, uh, the university is an example. Uh, our budget, I think, when I came was almost two million. Uh, when I left, it was over 60 million. Now it's almost 100 million. Uh, the stadium was just about 40,000. Uh, when I left, it was 93,000. Uh, when I came, the annual fundraising was 75,000. When I left, it was 22 million. So you can see that in a period, uh, and that was 40 years, it's been 10 years since then. Yeah, there's been a, a dramatic change in a lot of ways in facilities at one. Well, one of them that was not here in 1964, we're sitting in right now, and it happens that these are the gardens named for yourself, and I'm sure that's quite an honor. We're looking just a few hundred yards from your statue down the way, and sitting in uh, the Dooley Gardens, how much does it mean to have this space on campus dedicated uh, to you? Well, for a long time, uh, we were wondering what we were going to do with this space. In fact, I even was thinking in my mind to have plans to have added uh, parking facilities because we were running low on facilities uh, for parking. Uh, and uh, so when they decided uh, to uh, have a statue, uh, then somebody suggested a garden, which I got very excited about because I, uh, gardening has become my golf. I've said many times the great thing about living around a university, if you've got a curiosity about anything, you can satisfy it. And I've always audited classes and in history, Civil War history, and so I thought I'd take a course in, uh, in trees and shrubs, and that led to a, a book that I wrote on gardening. So I really got into gardening, and uh, what I like about it is that it really beautified the back entrance to this campus. Well, I think that anyone that's been here is glad that you didn't go the first route with the parking lot. This is just a little prettier yeah, than that. Yeah, much, much, much prettier. And there's, there's a great variety of plants here. And a lot of the students will come, and a lot of people I'll see that will uh, come and walk through the garden, sit down as a, what I call the contemplative garden over here on the side, which is where there's a lot of weeping plants and a nice place to just to sit down and a beautiful view of the track. Uh, so uh, I'm very proud of it. Having that broader perspective on Georgia Athletics, is it meaningful to see such a wide array of facilities uh, named in your honor? Uh, very much so. Uh, very proud of that. Uh, I did, uh, I was a football coach for 25 years and then I was the athletic director for 25 years and people said, well, you were here 40 years. Uh, mathematicians will quickly tell you that. But I overlapped and for 10 years I was able to do both jobs, uh, which is not highly recommended, but I was fortunate to have what I call good people on both sides of the ball. I had great assistant coaches and I had great assistant administrators and because of that we had some of our greatest years in, in that time that I was doing both jobs. But uh, in order to see uh, the university with a broad uh, athletic program in all sports, and then to provide the facilities uh, for those programs, I'm very honored to have it in my name. Well, we're gonna take a little tour and uh, a little trip down memory lane. We'll uh, visit some of your old haunts and looking forward to hearing some of the stories from a great 50 years with Coach Vince Dooley.
Well, Coach, we are here now on hallowed ground, a place where you spent, as you said, uh, 25 years as a head coach. To be here inside Sanford Stadium, 40,000 seats when you arrived, just shy of 93,000 right now where it presently sits, and I'm sure if we came back in, in 10 or 15 more years, it would look very different than it does now. What is your earliest memory of being here inside Sanford Stadium? Well, the earliest memory that comes to mind is the fact we had uh, lights out here. We had poles that stuck up right by where the players uh, sat on the sidelines. Uh, and uh, when I was at another school and we would get films from Georgia, you would see the light poles in the film, so you had to kind of look around in order to find what was going on. So the first spring practice we had, we had those lights, which actually you couldn't see very well with them. But uh, we used them that first spring, took them out, moved them over to the practice field where we used them. And then eventually in 1980 or 81 or 82, early 80, uh, we put permanent lights in and this is what we have today. Every week that there's a home game, we see on the video board the shot of you being carried on the shoulders of your team, winning the national championship in 1980. How special does that year feel to you now? I, I know we're 34 years removed from it, but when you start to think back about that magical season, what jumps to mind? Well, I think it's what, what you really strive for, to have that uh, year where there's no question, you're undefeated, you're undisputed, you're the national champions. Nobody disputed that. So we were consensus without a doubt, and were able to win every football game. And it was, uh, that's what you play for. Now, there were other times that we might have had teams that you could put on paper that said it might be better than this 80 team. But the fact remains that 80 team somehow, some way, won them all. And because of that, they are the national champions and they'll hold that uh, special pride all their lives. Well, one of the things as we stand here now and look at Sanford Stadium in 2014, I know you had the chance to attend the Clemson game, which is another one of those great Georgia wins uh, between the hedges. What's the biggest difference in terms of the atmosphere or in terms of game day here in Sanford Stadium right now compared to what it was like 50 years ago when you got here? Well, just the numbers itself, if you can imagine twice, over twice the numbers of what that, uh, what that means. Uh, we would come, we had a great crowd though. Uh, when we first came, we had some spirited people because all the fraternity freshmen they had to come here about three hours, four hours before the game, and they had to sit up in this little section over here, saving the seats for their older brothers who came later on. So when we arrived, we had a good crowd. And then uh, we had the track people, which was before we closed in the stadium. And we, when, when we played Alabama in 76, there were 10,000 people on that track, and they were packed at seven o'clock Friday night before the game the next day. So those were special moments. But as you see, we keep uh, kept adding to the stadium. And what I like about the stadium, every addition was in conformity and harmony with the rest of the stadium. So I don't think there is a stadium in the country or the world that has a stadium in which every seat, you can see what's going on. It is the best view of stadiums in the country and we're very proud of it. There's so many games that you have coached here, so many games that you were witness to as athletic director, and now the chance to be a fan. If you had to pick a favorite memory at Sanford Stadium, what would it be? Well, I guess it was the first and the last, because you started with a win. Uh, we had our first win uh, against uh, Clemson, I believe it was, ironically. And I guess the last one was against Georgia Tech, our arch rivals. So, there's a lot of things that happen in between, but you never forget the first one, you never forget the last one. Let me also add that, again, it's all about the players because they're the ones. And what we do is try to get them organized, and, uh, but their fighting spirit, that bulldog spirit, is something that always is special, and it's even more special between the hedges. We're standing here outside of Stegman Coliseum. It's a, a beautiful, brand new building now in 2014, and I know it was beautiful and brand new uh, in your time, though it probably looks a little bit different now than it may have 50 years ago. Uh, quite differently. It, 
Somebody could write a book on the changes that's been made in this Coliseum. But I came here when it opened because it opened against uh, Georgia Tech in basketball, and uh, which was a great crowd. It was overflowing, and we won the ball game, so it was a great way to start. And uh, so we were here. Uh, the football team was here. Our locker rooms were here. And uh, over the years, we kept changing and adjusting. And as I say, you could write a book on all the adjustments that have been made. But the latest is great, so we got a beautiful Coliseum. That it is. And with all the championship banners, Final Four banners that have been hung inside this building, it's a good time to talk about your tenure as athletic director, which, as you said, lasted for 25 years from 1979 and, until 2004. I think one of the things that we keep coming back to is the success, not just of the Georgia football program during your tenure, but the success of Georgia athletics overall. And how gratifying was that as the AD to witness so many championships during your tenure? Well, very, very special. And I remember my very first hire was uh, Andy Landers. Andy was, I think, 26 years old. And he used to drop me little cards when he was at Rome Junior College. And uh, I think he had his eye on this job. He knew it was going to be a good one. So he's still here, and what a, what a record he has. So I'm very, very proud of Andy, and of course there's so many others. Uh, Dan McGill was here when I came, but then uh, Manuel Diaz and the championships, he's won, Jeff Wallace, Suzanne Yachlin, and go on and on um, with all of the, the great championships won by so many great coaches who was able to attract some in, incredible student athletes here to the university. Well, and as you've said, that's what it all comes back to is, is the great student athletes. But from an administrative perspective, what was it as an athletic director that you were hoping to provide in terms of an experience, in terms of an education for those student athletes? Well, we've had some incredible scholar athletes. We've had some great student athletes, but some incredible scholar athletes. So our coaches have just done a wonderful job. We've provided maximum scholarships, provided uh, best facilities, a uh, good recruiting budget and give them an opportunity to do their things and they did it. They brought great student athletes that help us to win championships. Well coach, as you look at the bigger picture, over 50 years, the amount of opportunities for student athletes, both Georgia football and across the entire athletic department, I think that's a true measure of your legacy in the 50 years here at the University of Georgia. Well, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of our football team, one that I had an opportunity to coach but also the coaches that did a terrific job in all the sports to give us, I think, one of the best overall programs in the country. Well, Coach, this has been a great trip down memory lane. I hope that you've enjoyed it uh, the way that I have and the way that I'm sure our viewers have. Uh, 50 years of, of great stories and great memories and. We're standing here in front of the statue that uh, will keep you immortalized on this campus for, for centuries to come, and it's, it's just been a, a thrill to hear uh, about 50 great years, and, and we're looking forward to, to many more years of uh, association between you and the university. Well, I've enjoyed the visit, and it uh, certainly has uh, stirred a lot of uh, great memories for me. Uh, again, it's hard to believe it's been 50 years. Uh, this statue, a fellow named Stan Mullins, uh, decided to take a chance and and do this and uh, he had it done and then it just sat there for I don't know where it sat in his studio I guess for four or five years before they finally decided to erect it here. So Stan did a terrific job with him, very proud of it and particularly proud that uh, there are two players because that's really what it's all about are the players and uh, thanks to them I was here 50 years. Well, thank you so much for your time. It is a pleasure to get to talk to you. The legendary Coach Vince Dooley joining us to celebrate 50 years of association between him and the University of Georgia.